Okay, welcome, current freshmen in 2025. Uh, I, I know there are new students here that are sophomores, juniors, and even a senior here. So welcome for those uh, folks and students, families that are that are brand new to North, or maybe it's been a while since you have had a student at the high school level. But we are happy to have you here. We are happy to have you here live and in person and not have to do this by video. Uh, so thank you, it's a great turnout tonight. And uh, parents, guardians, uh, friends of the kids, if you had to haul some kids here, other kids, thank you for bringing them. And thank you for taking a great interest in your students' education. This is a very, very important four years coming up uh, for your student or a graduation year. You know, every year is important. And uh, again, uh, we're just excited to, uh, to be here in person. My name is John Majic, a principal here at North. This is my sixth year heading into North High School. I was a uh, social studies teacher back in the day and a longtime associate principal and another uh, uh, principal in another school district prior to coming here. Uh, my wife teaches uh, seventh grade science, Amy, at, uh, at Urban. Uh, some of you may have had her. Um, I have four kids. Uh, there'll be three at the high school level now. Twins, Jack and Elle, are sophomores. Lily's going to be a freshman. She's in this freshman class. And then Bree's in seventh grade. So uh, as a family, uh, we get to see firsthand a lot of kids. They're at our house, unfortunately, a lot. I have to kick them out. Um, we see a lot of kids. We see a lot of people. We're, we're all in in this community. We live right here in town. Uh, I like to think of uh, myself as being very accessible you know, either by email or phone and, and hopefully responsive, uh, uh, fast enough uh, to respond. So uh, keep this in mind that I am your principal and the people that I'm going to introduce, they are your, you know, uh, deans of students and associate principals. We're here for you. Uh, we're here. Uh, we don't teach in the classrooms, but we're like the old commercial BASF, you know, the chemical company that kind of all the little things that you don't see were the behind the scenes people. So. The most popular people in this building are our teachers and counselors, and we have a wonderful staff here. So if you're one, if you're a, a parent here that maybe have graduated, you know, 20 years ago, 15, uh, 30, whatever, uh, the school probably looks a lot different with a lot of additions and the staff, quite a bit of staff turnover. We've had a lot of retirements, but we have done our absolute best uh, to recruit talent and put talented people in front of the kids. So uh, I wanted you to know that uh, uh, this is a great school. I believe in it, I believe in our staff, uh, I believe in the kids, my own kids are here, a wife that teaches here, and we're just ecstatic uh, to be part of the Sheboygan area community and the district. So with that said, I would like to introduce a couple of people. Uh, first of all, to my immediate left, Mr. Joe O'Brien, Dean of Students. Joe was a counselor here, has been a counselor here for seven years, and then a counselor in another district. So Lakeland student, he's from Illinois, don't hold that against them. Although I know there's a new family from Illinois here, so I didn't mean that. So in any case, uh, uh, Joe is still a Bears fan, we won't hold that against them. But uh, Joe is our Dean of Students, and you'll hear more from him later. And then uh, to his left is Mr. Mark Whitney. Uh, Mark is a new associate principal for us this year, longtime educator though, comes from the Slinger School District as a middle school counselor. He's a former social studies teacher, middle school counselor. Uh, he is the uh, associate principal that works primarily with the 11th grade students. And then uh, uh, two people down is Mrs. Rachel Beeritzer. All right, uh, Mrs. Beeritzer uh, is a former English teacher from the Oshkosh School District. I hate to say this, she's the youngest of our team. No, Joe is the youngest. Uh, she's the second youngest. Uh, she's been with us for going on five years now, and she is the associate principal for our seniors. So that's Mrs. Beardser. Uh, skipped one person there, Mr. Dan Stengel, uh, former student. We think he graduated uh, 25 years ago, but he's still here. He did graduate, he went to college too. He's our activities director. Dan Stengel, Athletics and Activities Director, his office is on this end, so if you ever need to see the Activities Director, Activities, Dan has all of that. The rest of us are at entrance number two side in the main office by the East parking lot, 
okay? Where it's, kids generally come in and out of the building every morning. All right. Uh, and I'd like to introduce a couple more people here. Mrs. Ashley McGray, Ms. Ashley McGray, one of our counselors. You'll have a chance to speak with, or she'll have a chance to speak tonight. And I thought I saw Trevor Tagle here. Trevor? Okay, Trevor Tagle's another counselor here. So uh, you get a chance to speak with him. So the purpose of tonight, you have a handout with hopefully some important information, uh, all encompassing. Uh, we just hope to kind of give you a rough overview uh, of the school and really, you know, stay afterwards and answer specific questions if you have specific needs or questions regarding your student or your family or whatever, we're here to answer questions. But to kind of give you a rough overview, especially coming off a unique year like last year, where we were in a number of frameworks, we started the year cohorted, group A, group B, and then we at some point in the year, we uh, went all virtual, and then at some point in the year, later on in the year, we came back to cohorts A and B, and then we combined cohorts, and that's how we ended the year. So I would like to think of last year's students and those that are returning as being very flexible, our staff being very flexible and being able to change on a dime. Uh, I wanna emphasize, and you know what's behind me, I think on the, uh, on the projector, is uh, our, our core high school beliefs. And I really, I really got to see firsthand our belief in this when we went through some some tough moments last year, you know, you know, teaching all virtual, working with kids that you know weren't as connected, working with kids that were struggling, working with kids that kind of felt a sense of a loss because they didn't feel connected to their teacher or their sport or activity wasn't, you know. So, you know, we really had to do things differently last year and really had to find ways to reach out to kids and bring them in when we could and, and provide that additional academic support. So these beliefs really ran uh, very soundly, not hollow, but very soundly with me and I was able to see that. So at the core for us is building and maintaining meaningful relationships. We, we are a big school. We, you know, by the state standards uh, for a public school in Wisconsin, we're a large school. We're a division one school. We'll have almost 1,550 students here this upcoming year. That's a normal year. And uh, you know, almost 200 adults in this building with 90 teachers and five counselors and five administrators and you know loads of other support staff, secretaries, food service, custodial maintenance, you name it, and other support staff. So about 200 adults, 1,550 kids. That's a lot of people under one roof. We're, we're a size of a small town here. And, but we value relationships and we do some things here at North High School that we try to make a big building small in a number of different ways like having a homeroom, like keeping our class sizes as small as we can. And our teachers really value on getting to know the names of their kids. And by the end of the, you know, by parent-teacher conferences, they should know your, your child. They should know academic progress, you know, in, in a relatively short period of time with the amount of kids that they have on their caseload. I think it's really incredible. So our staff, long before I got here, you know, this is a core belief, we, we value and try to build meaningful relationships. And I see it. I, the class of 71 was just here. The class of uh, 65 is coming in this weekend, tons of people. And I see parents with kids that graduated 10 years ago or 15 years ago, they love this place. They love North High School, the, the hallowed halls and the hallway and the memories and the, what they did in the musical and on the softball diamond and the wrestling mat and the swimming pool. They love this place, you know, they're involved. And so I don't wanna screw that up as one of the newer principals and so, I want to continue to have, you know, this love, have, have kids have this love affair with North High School. And, and a lot of that has to do with relationships, those connections they build with their teachers. So we value that. Another thing we value is a strong curriculum that really, I mean, we're a comprehensive Wisconsin public high school, right? We cater to a lot of different kids and we try, and, and that becomes, and people think, oh, you're deluding yourself. When you have to, well, one is we have to do this. We have to teach all kids. And we have to get kids to go to a place where they all want to go by the end of high school, whether that's the world of work or college, two-year, four-year, or the military or whatever. So we, we, we do our best and work our tails off in all of those areas to help every kid be successful. And that takes a unique, comprehensive, wide curriculum to push kids that want to go to the Ivy League school or push kids that want to go become a welder or push kids. And I'll tell you what, my kids, I don't know what's in store for them. I, they, 
I don't know. I, I believe in it all. I believe in the military. I believe in a two-year, a four-year. I believe in the world of work. Whatever their dream or passion is, I know the adults here are going to get them there where they want to go. Third thing is that we nurture uh, each individual here. And again, that's getting to know your child. It's tough freshman year, first quarter, you know, to get to know freshmen inside and out. But I guarantee you by the end of that freshman year, and certainly by the end of the senior year, your child will have a connection with adults in this building. For some kids, it's 20. For some kids, it's two. For some, it's five. But they will have a connection if they're here and they're, and they're with us. All right? So we, we value that. And then we value collaboration. Our whole, a lot of our professional development is trying to get our adults to work together. That means liking one another. That means sharing with one another. That means being professional with one another. What does that translate to? That's what we want our kids to do too. So we have to model that and we want our kids to come out the same way as well. So collaborative efforts by all. So a lot of what we believe in core beliefs, those are the beliefs we try to instill in, in upon our kids to get them to where they want to go. So at North, kind of our, you'll see this around the school if you get a chance to walk around the building. Again, a lot of cleaning going on. The place is a mess. I apologize for that, but we still have three weeks to get ready. But in any case, uh, you'll see signage, you know, better together or respect, ownership, and engagement. And those are things that we kind of drill into our kids at nauseum, in homeroom, in the classroom, with their adults, back to our kids, with each other as adults, back to our kids. Respect, you know, celebrating each other no matter what you're back from. Ownership for learning, taking ownership, you know, calling that teacher on your own, asking that question, whatever it is, taking ownership, and engagement, you know, something beyond the classroom. As a student, are you willing to compete? Or are you willing to perform? Or are you willing to participate in any way you can? So every kid can do that. Compete, perform, or contribute. That's almost an expectation. You're going to hear that from now until whatever, ad nauseum. Get involved, get involved, get involved. Because every kid can. Compete, perform, or contribute. All 396 freshmen this year can do that and all 1,550 of our kids can do that, and we all see the benefits of doing that. So again, there's a ton of offerings here. I'm not gonna go into dirty detail. That's what these folks are for. Welcome. Uh, I'm excited to start the year. It's kind of boring last year sometimes. You know, you wait for the kids. We all love high school. We're high school people, and our teachers. We're high school people. Why? Because we love the buzz of this place. We love kids talking and competing and performing and contributing. We love it. We, I, it's exciting. It makes the days go fast. Every day is different. And so I'm really excited about the class of 2025 and our new students. Welcome to North, North High School. I want to turn it over to Joe O'Brien, our Dean of Students. Give it up for Joe O'Brien. Woo! All right. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, John, for the great introduction. And thank you guys for that great welcome. Uh, as John said, I, I've been uh, here at North High School now. I'm going into my eighth year. I, I spent the first seven years as, as a, a school counselor here. Uh, in addition to my role as the Dean of Students, I'm also the head football coach uh, and assistant track and field coach. Uh, and then in the winters, I like to keep myself busy too after school, uh, and I do scorekeeping for basketball and wrestling events as well. So you guys will see me year-round uh, th throughout the school day and then after school as well. Uh, and, and I welcome all of you guys here tonight, and, and I'm really looking for a great school year. Uh, at home, I also like to keep busy, right? So I, I'm very busy here at North High School, but uh, my, my wife and I have four kids at home and one on the way, so we're going to have five total kids in the house, uh, and we're really looking forward to that. Uh, and again, looking forward to a very great school year. Uh, with, one on the way? Yeah, one on the way. You didn't even know what we got that, Joe. I didn't know that. Yep, one on the way. Wow, surprise, yep. surprise. Exactly. <laughs> All right. Hey, I learned something every day and every minute. Thanks, Mr. O'Brien. There we go. Not a problem. All right. Uh, so with that, you guys all should have received a couple of handouts tonight. Uh, the packet of information should have some of the logistics uh, that are real important to our school year. So you guys should see a 2021-2022 a school year schedule. Uh, and then also those important contacts for, for uh, your students. So if you guys are, have ninth and 10th grade students, you guys have questions or concerns, feel, please feel free to reach out to myself. If you guys have an 11th grade student, you guys will reach out to Mark, and then a 12th grade student uh, to Rachel Beeritzer. Uh, and then I believe the counselor's information is there as well. I gave up my extra uh, handout, so I'm not sure exactly what you guys are looking at as well. 
uh, anymore. But you guys should have your counselor's uh, information in there as well. And there was a Skyler. So if you guys didn't get that information, uh, Ms. McGray is going to be around. All of us will be around. We're happy to answer any individual questions you guys have about that. Uh, also within that, that packet of information, then should also have the bell schedule. Uh, so I'm going to talk to you guys a little bit about a, a typical day for a North High student. Uh, first and foremost, again, the, the bell schedule uh, is in the packet. Uh, we, we live on a traditional high school schedule, so what that means is you guys have the same schedule Monday through Friday for semester one. Semester two should look very similar. It might have a couple uh, uh, differences there, but again, Monday through Friday is going to be the same all, uh, all semester two as well. Uh, and the one caveat to that is going to be on Wednesday. So uh, many of you guys are uh, you know, familiar with the early release schedule on Wednesdays in the Sheboygan Area School District. That will continue again this year, so there is an early release on Wednesday, so a, a, a smaller best of bell schedule there on Wednesday. So just something to take note of. Uh, and with that, it also changes the lunch. So I think if you guys are looking at that, you'll see Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, we have two lunches, early lunch and late lunch, and that's during fourth hour. And then uh, on Wednesdays, because again, the, the bell schedule shifts a little bit, uh, that'll be during fifth hour. And again, we'll have two lunches. And what we do is we split the building in half. And then the, the first half of the group, they're going to go to what is called early lunch. So they'll go to lunch before they go to their fourth hour class. And then the other half of the, the building will be in their fourth hour class. And then they'll, they will go to what we call late lunch. Uh, so they'll go to class first and then lunch. And then everyone will go to their fifth hour class at the same time, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday. Okay. Uh, so that's how that works. Uh, and then I'm kind of shifting things around. I should have put in a better order. I, I'm the one who created this after all. Uh, but anyways, homeroom and Raider time, that's something that's very unique here at North High School. And I think it's, it's, it's a, a very cool and special thing that we have here. Uh, so homeroom is, is the, the idea there is we're going to take our large building of 1,550 students and we're going to shrink it down into a much smaller, tight-knit community for you guys. Uh, and there's going to be no more than about 20 students in that homeroom. You'll have the same homeroom makeup for the next four years. So you'll have the same teacher there. The same 20 students will be in that homeroom, and they will travel with you guys for the next four years. So the idea is, the idea there is to really start to get to know each other, develop some quality relationships within homeroom. Uh, and then we also cover uh, academic and career planning, uh, social emotional learning, uh, and, and plenty of other things during that homeroom time as well. But the main focus there is really developing uh, that, that really good relationship with that smaller, uh, tight knit group. And then Raider time is something that we, we uh, really started a couple years ago. We had to put a pause on it last year uh, just due to the, the schedule. Uh, but the idea there is every Tuesday, Thursday, and every other Friday is going to be what is called Raider time during that same time period. So homeroom and Raider time are really kind of the same time of the day. Uh, but for students that need some additional help, they'll have an opportunity then during Raider time to go and see a teacher to receive some additional help. Uh, maybe your student's rocking it, but there's a really big test coming up. They might go and see their math teacher to receive a little bit more study help for that big test. Uh, if a student is struggling, maybe they don't want to go see their math teacher, so their math teacher is going to then invite them to come and get some extra help as well during that time. Uh, and then we also offer a lot of different enrichment during that time as well, uh, and our clubs and activities are able to hold meetings too. So uh, our students have a, a whole uh, a menu to kind of choose from. Sometimes they're pulled in different directions from their uh, advisors or coaches uh, and or, again, their teachers. And, and the, the main idea there, again, is providing some extra time in our school day to help our students get to that next level. And speaking of the next level, then, we have a lot of different opportunities here at North High School to earn dual credit. Uh, and what that means is we have classes that we offer here at North High School that uh, qualifies for high school credit, obviously, but also we have a connection with a local university or two-year college that then also grants the students uh, college credit. Uh, and some of those options come uh, at free of cost to our students. Some of them come at a, a, a smaller cost than it would be if they were taken at college at the university themselves. So there's a lot of great opportunities, and if your students kind of have an idea of what they want to do in the future, it's a great opportunity to start talking about that now so they can start taking advantage of some of these college level classes, whether it is two year technical degree classes or four year university classes that they can apply then to their uh, studies after high school. All right, and then extracurricular opportunities, which actually rolls into the next slide. We have 
a, a bunch of different extracurricular opportunities here at North High School. Uh, last year, I was visiting a lot of your classrooms virtually, uh, and I was telling you guys to get involved, and, and I'm going to say it till I get blue in the face. There's research out there that says if you guys are involved after school hours, your grades are going to go up, your ACT scores are going to improve, your overall life is just going to be better off for that. And, and me personally, being someone that is involved in those extracurriculars after school, I'm telling you firsthand experience, it, it, the, the reason why those things start going up is because you guys are developing relationships with people that are like-minded. They share in the same passion as you. Uh, and you might already know who those people are, uh, but you also might not. And, and that's the night, night, neat, neat thing about being in a big, big school like this, is there's a lot more people that share that same passion. And we have over 60 different clubs and organizations here at North High School uh, and, and a plethora of different sports in the, in the fall, winter, and spring. It's going to be hard for you not to find something that you're interested in, uh, but we do challenge you with that. All right. So if you don't find something that you're interested in, let us know, okay? Because we still want to, we will help you guys create those clubs, sports, organizations, whatever it is, they will help you guys create that because that is truly what we believe in is those extracurricular activities. Okay, so please take a look at the website tonight, uh, scroll over activities, see the, the uh, drop, click on that, see all the different opportunities out there, click on some of them, start emailing the coaches and advisors, and, and get some more information about those. Um, again, a lot of great opportunities here at North High School. Uh, a couple of other things that come on a little bit later in the year, Expo is a, is a talent show, uh, a lot of great opportunities there. Uh, we did have Expo in the spring, it was a little bit different, but again, we're, we're looking and hoping to get back to normal, so a much bigger event, uh, and, and that's certainly one that our students look forward to every year. Uh, and then our, our, our celebrations, uh, so homecoming uh, coming up here in the fall, we, we play Sheboygan South uh, for homecoming this year, so it's going to be a, a, a huge week, uh, and, we, and we're looking forward to that game. Uh, and then with that also comes the homecoming dance. Uh, and then there's another dance then in the spring as well. Uh, and with that, those larger events, you know, we, we take a lot of pride in, in those events and, and we then put our, the challenge back to our students. So in those, for those special events, uh, they have to have, you know, met the, the, uh, the requirements then for attendance and grades to be able to get a ticket to those events. Uh, so I just wanted to, uh, to highlight that quickly here for you guys uh, before I pass it over. All right, to Associate Principal Rachel Bierter. You got to give it up for her, too. Thanks, Joe. It's obvious I'm the best looking one in the crew because I'm the only lady this year. So uh, we'll try to hold the fourth time. I'm also the seventh inning stretch. I'm halfway in between. So we'll take a pause and students, I'm going to ask you to participate right now. Show of hands, how many of you are excited to be out of middle school and entering into high school? Show of hands. I got one brave soul, two, excellent. Thank you gentlemen in the back. They are looking like they came right from football practice. They're excited to be here, another one right there. How many of you are nervous to be starting high school? There might be more hands now. I love the parents that are kind of like helping out they're like, get out of the house, be nervous, that's fine. What I'm talking about is a little bit about that transition over to high school and what that looks like. And I'm also going to hit a quick pause here. A lot of information coming to you today. If for some reason you didn't get a packet, we are busting at the seams. This is great. Oh, this is so exciting to see so many people here. If you didn't get one of those packets that Mr. O'Brien was referencing, hey, Johnny, can you give a wave? Give a wave, Johnny. Johnny can get you another packet. Johnny, by the way, is the absolute face of North and the most beloved person here. So you'll see Johnny everywhere, but we have to have, yeah, give it up for Johnny Moss. We do have more packets, so we'd be happy to get you one if you didn't get one when you came in. It's great when you run out. It means a lot of people are here. Time back in, back to what transition looks like so that we can be excited and maybe cut down on a few of those nerves. First of all, the first day of school, we start on a Wednesday, September 1st. Little side note, it's an early release day, the first day. <laughs> Love when it falls on a Wednesday. Right away, just throw it in the uh, little wrinkle. But for the first day of school, we do bring in our freshmen only and new students. We also want to invite in any sophomores that were all virtual that maybe haven't stepped foot into North High School since 
maybe eighth grade when we had our eighth grade open house in January. So we invite freshmen, new students that first day to come in and it's, it's your day. It's your day to explore where it's only about 400 students here, 450 versus that little bit larger crowd of 1500 plus. On that first day, what we'll be doing is we'll welcome you normal time, 755, and you'll start in your homeroom. You'll have an opportunity to do some activities and team building. Our blue crew, who Miss McGray over yonder happens to help oversee, puts together a nice program. That's our upperclassmen that help you feel comfortable and uh, acclimated to a day. There will be a class meeting. Mr. O'Brien, as the oversight of 9th and 10th grade, will help run that class meeting. We'll have an activity fair over the lunch hour. The gym will have different booths set up so that you can get involved and hear a little bit more about those things that maybe you don't know about. And perhaps there's something that's going to strike your interest that you didn't even know existed. You'll have a mock schedule walkthrough. It'll be a pretty condensed class period. It won't be your normal 50-minute class period. It's going to be shorter than that. But at least you can walk to your schedule. Because although I have to turn back the hands of time now over two decades, which is scary, and I'm, I've got so much more gray hair than I ever did. Uh, it has nothing to do with administration, just age. But anyways, I remember being a freshman 20-ish years ago and thinking my biggest fear was walking into the wrong classroom. Oh my goodness, they're all gonna laugh at me. Well, you're not alone, I didn't walk in the wrong classroom and we're gonna put you through a mock schedule so you feel comfortable and nobody's going to laugh at you. And if they do, you can tell me about it and then I'll talk to them about how we're not gonna laugh at you. <laughs> the end of the day will be a homeroom debrief so we'll have a chance to really talk about how it went, questions you might have. We want you to feel so comfortable to be here. That is half the battle. You here, comfortable. Note, zero hour, for those students taking zero hour, bless your heart, you want to be here at seven, you get it. And so that'll start day two, which will be Thursday, September 2nd. One last note, we will take pictures on your first day. That will be for the yearbook and for IDs. So I guess wear your favorite whatever, and we'll have pictures that day. Then get into a little bit of the nuts and bolts about what high school is all about. We want you to be involved, but at the end of the day, we're an institution of learning. And you graduating and being a productive citizen in society, whatever that might look like, like Mr. Machek was saying, it could be military, it could be workforce, it could be two-year, four-year, that doesn't matter to us. What matters to us is that you're prepared for life after here. What does that mean? It means 23 credits. And your counselors will be helpful to let you know where you're at in that journey. A lot of research would tell you though that how you start out of the gate freshman year, it matters. The more you're in tune to school, the more you're locked in and getting through classes your freshman year, the more it opens up things on the back end. More electives as you become juniors and seniors, really getting involved in classes that you're like, whoa, that could be my profession one day. Passing classes matter. Coming to school matters. Why? We love seeing you, and we know that that's the ticket for your success. You can see behind me the different credits that are involved to get you to 23, but ultimately it's about getting you across that stage at Bullrad, so you have a plethora of opportunities available to you, and your parents can say, see you later, we love you, and good luck. Stop asking me for money. <laughs> Which never actually stops. I still ask my parents for money occasionally. Not, not really. I'm paying for things for them now. Anyway, you'll schedule in January of next year. So January 2022, we'll do the scheduling process. For those of you that are part of the SASD currently, you have used Zello. I'm confident of that. You've used the Zello program to do your scheduling previously. Some of you are shrugging your shoulders like, what is Zello? Trust me, you'll know. And it's an easy platform where we just do our scheduling through that. And that'll be January of next year to then schedule for your sophomore year. Our school district adopted something a few years ago called College and Career and Life Ready. What does that mean? It means that we want you to be ready again for that world, whatever it means, college or the world of work. Attendance is one of those key indicators to be career ready. Showing up, again, is over half the battle. Passing classes. 2.8 GPA puts you at about a C plus, B minus average. I think everybody in this room can do that. I really do. I believe that. Maybe some classes are going to be tougher than others, but we want to get you to that 2.8. It's one of those key indicators for being, excuse me, college ready. I jumped a little bit there with career.
But in, in terms of college rate, besides that 2.8, you can see the other three listings there, getting involved in CAP classes or AP classes, dual credit classes, similar to what Mr. O'Brien talked about, getting you into advanced algebra, which is, if you're taking algebra this year, it's like your third year into it, so getting you through that junior level class, which by the way, fingers crossed, should be counting as a CAP class pretty darn quick. And then ACT scores of 18s or better across the board. Again, that's college readiness. And again, I'm a firm believer that everybody in this room can get that first indicator, 2.8 GPA. And then let's challenge ourselves to get another one of those indicators. Career ready, going back to attendance, which ties into being college ready. People that skip classes in college don't always make it through. Not everybody's Bill Gates skipping classes at MIT just to ace tests. So. Showing up is important for school here to be career ready and college, in addition to other things to be career ready. We want you to have community service. You know, Mr. Machek talked about getting involved and that everybody could, you know, compete, perform, or contribute. And when we say contribute, we don't just mean to North High School, we mean to Sheboygan community, to give back. So 25 hours, that's six and a half hours a year-ish. My math's not great, but somewhere in there. That actually could be, I think, 26 hours of giving back to our community. Industrial credentials, can we get you out to different workplaces and involved with that? And or just job sharing with a learning experience in the workplace. Pathway courses include things like IT here in our building. That's our connection with LTC and, Lake, and excuse me, Lakeland. And or extracurriculars. All those are indicators for being career ready. Can you get two or more? I'm gonna challenge you, can you get four or more on that board? I mean, I would hope everybody could be here 90% of the time, one. And number two, I would hope everybody in four years could be involved in, with at least two things at some point in their journey. So my challenge to you today as you sit here and you're hearing a lot of adults talk at you is how can you get involved? How can you hear, hit these measurements? Because this is research saying this is what's going to have you ready for life. And ultimately, that's why we're here as a school, to get you ready for life after the next four years, which, by the way, are going to fly by real fast. I see nods from parents. They're going, yeah, I would be 16 again if it wasn't for social media. Maybe not. <laughs> but I think everybody in the room that's been through high school can attest that it goes by in the blink of an eye. Lastly, my last slide today, talk a little bit about academic supports. We're not just going to have your children be released to the hounds of 1550 and say, good luck. And if it's a struggle, too bad, so sad. Anything but, we're here to help support, and there are a multitude of resources here. Everybody wants to see your child be the best version of themselves when they leave here. We have things like our Raider Learning Center, RLC, uh, with Ms. Davis. If there's a time and place where maybe some credit recovery is needed, we can do that right here in house. Raider Time, as Mr. O'Brien indicated, we offer enrichment as well as maybe some extra additional help in some classes that might be a struggle at times. I know for me it was science. Dear Lord. Uh, homeroom grade checks, we'll have our homeroom teachers not only build that community, but also do grade checks throughout the year uh, at minimum four times uh, more than that, though, really, as we look at progress report and checks and then, you know, eligibility for co-curriculars and such. We run success labs, which are smaller study halls for students that maybe just need a little uh, bit of TLC and a little bit smaller setting to help them be successful. And then certainly we have the study hall options right here in our commons. Again, opportunities for, for study and learning asking questions and bettering to be prepared for, again, life after high school. I'm really looking forward to meeting your sons and daughters. I'm really looking forward to meeting you. And yes, if I coached you in basketball, I'll be keeping an extra special eye on you. Thanks so much. I'm going to turn it over to our other associate principal, Mr. Mark Whitten. All right. Thank you. Welcome, everyone. Uh, I am on day five here. Uh, I know how to get here, 23 to Taylor Drive uh, to North Ave to 10th Street. Uh, and I was able to walk my way from my office to the Commons area without getting lost. Although I did have to ask one of the secretaries. So, uh, but I got here and uh, so we'll see how this goes. Uh, this portion, okay. Uh, this portion is really directed at parents. Uh, and having a 23 and a 21 year old uh, that have gone through high school, hopefully uh, some of this will, will resonate for you. Uh, the biggest thing that I'm gonna start with is transitioning to high school. Uh, change will happen in so many, many different ways. Uh, 
we as educators, you as parents, we both want your students to be able to do a couple of the things. Uh, we want them to be able to find themselves in environments of success. Uh, we put it out there, they have the opportunity to succeed. Uh, and this one for me really speaks to who they surround themselves with. You've, talk, you've heard the other individuals talk about uh, all that they can get involved in. Having a good core group of friends, people that share, that share the same interests that they do, have the same passions that they do, uh, are gonna help drive them to success. That's incredibly important uh, and will be important over the next four years. We want them to grow in and outside of the classroom. Uh, we want them to be actively engaged while in the classroom. We want them to be actively involved uh, in all of the activities that Mr. O'Brien talked about uh, that they can be involved in. Uh, and like he said, research shows Kids that are involved in extracurricular activities uh, do better academically. Uh, so very important for them to get in, involved outside the classroom. And we want you to help them see bumps in the road as opportunities to learn and grow as individuals. Uh, your child is going to fail at some point in time. Fail forward is what I like to say. Mistakes are meant for learning. and the sooner that you can kind of lead them on that path and help them understand that, uh, the more that it's going to resonate with them. If we've learned anything over the last year and a half, we've learned how important resilience is. Uh, and it is a definitely a valuable skill that they're going to need uh, as they come in as new students here at North High School. You see, no, oh, go back, one sec. Yeah, I, I, I really love the graphic. Uh, the first, now, everybody's perspective is different. Uh, so the first time I looked at the graphic that Ms. Beardser put on the slide, I totally got it. But my secondary thought was fish out of water. Okay, now you guys can understand what fish out of water means. That's not what it's meant to be. This is really about your child, being the fish, leaving their comfort zone and entering into this learning lab of life that is North High School. Uh, and we hope to encourage you to empower your child to seek independence. You have to let go a little bit uh, and let them experience some of the things and all, well, all the great things uh, that high school has to offer. So we really encourage you uh, to, to move along that path. Along the way, you will need to support their journey. How do you do that? You encourage your child to use the resources that are available to them and seek opportunities. But not just for your child, for you as well. Because you as the parents, you are advocates for your child. If you know your child is struggling, you have to use the resources that are available to you. Uh, so you can encourage them to contact teachers contact their homeroom teacher, contact their counselor, talk to an administrator. But you as a parent can do that as well and should do that anytime that you see your child struggling. Reach out to people so that they can get you anything it is that they need to hopefully help them. Uh, seek opportunities to get involved again. The others talked about that. Getting involved, staying as connected as possible to your school. And, and, and being a part of the fabric. I think Mr. Modric talked about how uh, it, it's got its own heartbeat and you want to be a part of that heartbeat uh, each and every single day. As a parent, get involved with school. You can be part of the Raider Parent Association. The second Tuesday of every month, is that right? Second Tuesday of every month, in the library, 4.30 to 5.30 is when they meet. If you want to be on top of things and be ahead of the curve, attend, uh, you'll find out everything uh, firsthand instead of secondhand. And then parent-teacher conferences. There is, there is the schedule that parent-teacher conferences will follow. Uh, we do them in spring, uh, in November, and then also in February. You will see that there is a Wednesday, kind of a, a late or early afternoon, late afternoon uh, time slot, 2.30 to 5.30. And then on Friday of the same week uh, will be daytime conferences start at eight o'clock uh, and run until two o'clock. And like I said, November and February parent-teacher conferences. We live in a digital world. There are so many, many ways for you to stay connected and stay uh, alert to what's going on. 
Uh, North High School website, lots of information on there. Make sure you get on there. Uh, Raider report is sent out by Mr. Machek bi-monthly. Uh, student services will send out a newsletter monthly. Yeah. Monthly. Uh, I'm still learning, still getting all this down. Lots of stuff. I, I know where this is now, so that's good. Uh, social media, Facebook, at Sheboygan North High, uh, plenty of info on there. On Twitter, at ShevNHS. Uh, and then on Instagram, Notorious Publications, uh, which is our yearbook and media group. Get on, check your student grades. Skyward, not always the easiest to use, but once you get on, you get in, it, it, you kind of get used to the path of how to get there. Uh, get on Skyward Family Access, check your grades uh, early and often. Don't wait till the end of the quarter, end of the semester. Uh, get on there and see how they're doing. Uh, updates and alerts are sent by Skylert, so whatever form of or method of information you put in there, uh, by phone or by uh, email or by texts. And then lastly, what you really want to know. I put a top five here, supply lists. You got a supply list in your, uh, in your packet. Trust me, it's not all inclusive. Uh, the best information that was given, and when we talked about get the essentials, the paper, the pencils, the pens, uh, those kinds of things, after the first couple of days of school, you get into the classes, then you'll really find out the specifics of what is needed. Uh, teachers teach multiple classes, they need different things, uh, so it's just better for them to find out those first couple of days so you don't go and get something that you don't necessarily need. Dress code, yes, we have a dress code. Uh, very simply, just think about it as job appropriate, what you would wear to a job. Uh, no t-shirts with inappropriate sayings, no headgear, uh, hoods or hats, um, nothing, no undergarments showing, don't want to see midriffs and stuff like that. Uh, so simple, what you would wear to a job. Uh, number three, bus, busing and drop-off. Always a, a, an interesting one. So I learned today, if you live in the city of Sheboygan, you ride the city bus, you get on there free with your ID, and the drop-off is front of, the, front of the school. No, that way? Okay, you guys are pointing in two different directions. Come on. Other side. Other side of the building, right by the cemetery, right in the front. Of us. There we go. I like landmarks. I'm a history guy. I like that. Big one. You're gonna, yep, can't miss it. Uh, if you live outside the city, you're going to take the school bus, and right out here is where drop off is and pick up is. Uh, so after school, get your things together, uh, and then you're going to meet your bus out here, and they leave somewhat soon after school ends. Uh, if you drop off and pick up, two options. You can either drop off and pick up up here right by the commons or door two uh, in the parking lot in front of the building. Uh, we do allow backpacks. That's how kids will pretty much get your stuff around the building. Uh, it, it's a big building, as I learned today through my tour. Uh, I, I don't know. i got to check how many steps we put on. It's a good number. So you're going to carry most of your stuff in your backpack throughout the day, but you're going to stop at your locker at the beginning of the day, put your coat in there, anything that you really don't need. Uh, maybe your lunch, you're going to catch that before you head to lunch. Uh, but most of your school stuff, the things you're going to take to class, you're going to have in your backpack. And then lastly, breakfast and lunch are free all year. Uh, but if that's not your, your thing, if you don't like school lunch, you like leftovers, uh, which I personally do, we do have microwaves uh, throughout in the commons area here. Uh, so you can bring last night's spaghetti and meatballs, pop it in the microwave, heat it up, good to go. Uh, and then my final thing, most, most importantly, parents don't wonder about something. Don't speculate, don't guess, don't assume. Just call. Get the information that you need. Use the resources available to you because you want to make sure you have the correct information. Uh, having been there before, kids don't always bring the right information home. Uh, or what they heard is not what is necessarily coming out of their mouth. Uh, so you can get the direct information by calling and make sure you have all the information. So that's all I have for you. Thank you very much. And now I would like to introduce Ms. McGray, one of our counselors here at North. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, thank you, everyone, for coming. 
Um, I hope you are able to take away some things. Um, we have some questions answered this evening, but as we mentioned at the end, I'm the end of the show here. So at the end, uh, we'll be around to answer any other questions you might have. Um, so as I was introduced, I am Ms. McGray. I am one of five counselors here at North. We actually split all of our students alphabetically by last name. This did not actually make it in the packet. So if you want to take out your phone now and take a picture of it, totally fine. Otherwise, in your packet, uh, our two secretaries are in there and you, they're always helpful. So you can just call that number and they'll just forward you over to us. Um, and even if you can't remember the counselor's name at any time, they will make sure to take care of you and get you to the right person. Um, but it's not rude to take out your phone and, and take a picture of that. <laughs> um, but we will follow you, your child or you guys if you're in the audience here all four years that you're here. So one constant, you might get lucky and have a teacher for all four years. Not doesn't always happen every once in a while, but we will be someone as well as your homeroom teacher who will follow you all four years um, during your time at North. Yeah. Sorry guys, I'm, I'm a winger, so I just kind of wing it. I think I like this one better. Um, I get a lot of questions about like, what do counselors do? How do counselors help students? And so I really like this image. Um, I, I don't know if we use it every year, but I feel like the easiest way when people ask me, what, did, what does a school counselor do? Um, is that we know a little bit about a lot of different things and we help guide you and your child in the right direction to that next person. Um, but some of the main focuses of a school counselor is working with students and families with academic career and social emotional um, needs. Um, so more specifically, when it comes to academics, a lot of people, ooh, my, my schedule, my schedule. So I wanted to make a side note about schedules. Um, me, particularly, I have not even started looking at them yet. I think I made it through five students. So if you have a child who has T through Z, that's me, and you see gaps in the schedule, there's a blank, it's because I haven't gotten to filling in all of those blanks or conflicts. I will do it as soon as possible. Um, but even if I am not your, count, your child's counselor, um, just give us a couple days to finish up filling those in. But if you do see, um, you know, a missing period or, you know, something just that doesn't look right or not what you signed up for, um, definitely feel free to reach out to us. Um, but we don't take um, teacher requests or like I want to have a, this a certain hour. We're um, not taking those types of requests. So I was asked to make note of that um, as far as scheduling goes and that kind of academic component. Um, but Another thing that was mentioned earlier, and I can't remember who said it, um, they listed, maybe it was Mrs. Beertzer, the different resources for academic support that are available, right? Um, and so we are kind of, I want to say the gatekeepers of those things. So uh, we're kind of that go between with you, um, the student, the parents, and the teachers, uh, and those that provide those academic supports to get you in the right spot if you do need any kind of um, additional support. Uh, otherwise, down at the bottom, it kind of lists the ways in which we support. So in the classroom or homerooms, there's academic supports, um, of course, the career and then the personal social. But it also happens in small group settings when needed and one on one, specifically careers. Um, we do a lot with one on one, um, but also in the classroom homeroom. So everyone gets some kinds of lessons uh, regarding and I believe that was noted as well, kind of the career um, looking into the future as a group, and then we do meet individually and invite parents to come in at least one time during high school uh, to have those kind of sit down meetings. But, can you go to the other one? Really, freshman year, we don't want you to worry and we want you to be comfortable here at North, um, comfortable academically, comfortable socially, emotionally. We want you to feel like this is your school, that you live here, this is your place. Um, I am someone who went to North High, graduated from here, um, so I like I feel like I automatically have that um, kind of pride and um, I maybe respect, like, this is my place. I own this place. We want you guys to feel that way, that this is a, a, a family, you know, to all of you guys. So really, that's what this year is about, is just getting comfortable so that we can start working on all of those other pieces. Um, you are definitely going to get some information as far as career planning in the future. I'm looking to start exploring things as a freshman, but we're really going to start to emphasize that more as you guys get older. Um, so identifying skills and abilities as sophomore year, moving on to getting some experiences, um, and then applying those skills as you get older. So we're going to work on them, but slowly. We don't want you guys to stress out. We just want you to start feeling comfortable here. Um, 
I know everyone has talked about involvement, so I'm just gonna make a note. I won't, if you wanna hear some personal stories about my involvement here at North, I'm happy to share them. Um, great experiences here, but I don't know if when uh, Mrs. Beers were talked, she mentioned the activity fair. I didn't hear you get into any specifics. Um, on that first day of school, there'll be an activity fair, part of the Blue Crew activities that I help organize. Um, there's gonna be tables for your child, for you guys, and you'll be able to go around. And of course, we have the incentives, tickets, you can get prizes, but we want you to go around and just get some information um, about things that you may have thought of, or maybe things you haven't tried, um, at least. And usually it's a student, an older student that's running that, so you can kind of meet one or two people that are already involved. Maybe it's someone you know, maybe it's someone you went to middle school with. Um, and then if you are not comfortable with that, right, there's always those groups of kids that I have to like push and get them to get out of their little huddles and go and look. Um, or if later on you're like, oh wait, I really think I might like chess, maybe I wanna try that. Um, I also have a son that will be a freshman this year, so chess is his thing, that's why I mentioned that. Let me know if you wanna get involved in chess. Um, on our school website, we didn't bring that up, there's an activities tab way at the top, and it will list all of the activities, a little blurb, and the person to contact. So you can reach out, I get that question a lot. Hey, Ms. McGray, right? Those kids are emailing now. Who is the advisor for this or that? You can look it up right on the website, their email address is right there, and you can email them if it doesn't already say, hey, we meet on Tuesdays. And most clubs, you can join at any time. So if it's not till May that you're like, you know what, I really should get involved in something, I'm getting older, I'm more comfortable, then just look up that club and see what you can do in May. Totally fine, right? We're just trying to adjust. Oh, I forgot to tell you guys, I was surprising you, but I didn't do a surprise. So I'm gonna end this on what everyone wants to know. Yes, testing will continue when you're in high school. Everyone's so excited, right? Okay. <laughs> you don't have to worry. In ninth and 10th grade, you're gonna take the Aspire, which is a computer-based test that is assessing, right? It's looking at the likelihood, what your predicted scores for the ACT. ACT, right, is a test that's used to measure um, kind of college and career readiness. Um, but when you are in ninth and 10th grade, you don't need to worry about preparing for it in any way, very much like maybe the STAR test you took in middle school or some of the, I can't remember, I know it's not WKC anymore, forward, whatever they call them now. Um, you don't need to worry about it. Again, we're just adjusting. It measures what you should learn throughout your time in school, from kindergarten up until that point in time. So as long as you were in school, you're probably going to do okay and you don't have to worry about it. But it is something that you will have to do, and we will let you guys know when that is happening. Individually, we'll talk more about the ACT based on your career plans um, in the future, in, on your, based on your plan, sorry. Sorry that I did not end the evening on an exciting note. It's testing, but I'm sure Mr. Majek has lots of exciting I'll things. I'll try. I got a good joke. No, I'm not going to tell a joke. Either. So, again, let's fast forward between now and Wednesday, September 1, okay? All right. So, parents, just get your kids here by 7.55. Kids, just get, if you walk, be here before 7.55, okay? Just get in the building, because on Wednesday, September 1, um, we are going to just have all the students go to their homerooms. We're going to make this big place really, really small right away, and we're going to have an orientation for the entire day. Okay, well, we'll get up to all the details. So that first day of school, Dress for success, just dress right, okay? Bring your backpack, something right with, something right on. Be here before 7.55. If you don't know where your homeroom is, there'll be 50 people out in the hallways and ever, and they'll, they'll walk you to your homeroom, okay? So parents, rest assured, when you drop them off on Wednesday, September 1, we will take them from there. You can release, go have some coffee, got my kid off to high school, I'm good, I get some freedom. We got it, okay? We got it. You don't have to worry about a thing. We got this, all right? So just release them, we're good, all right? All right, so that, and then the rest of the year is gonna be super fantastic. We can't tell you everything because it's just a process, right? It's a process for the entire year and for the four-year career. And every day is gonna just, we're gonna learn a little bit more. So get them here, let them go, relax. I got my kid off to high school. I'm living life great. Four years, they're out of the house. I don't, uh, Maybe still, maybe they're on their own. I don't know. But anyway, uh, so that's, we're excited. And the rest of the night is this. We're just going to stay here. It's, again, the place is messy. 
If you register, you have access to your schedule. If you can't get at your schedule, it probably means you didn't register, okay? So as soon as you register, you can look at your schedule. If you want to come in now, between now and the, or tomorrow and the start of school, to so check out your locker, blah, blah, blah. That's all there. You can check out your locker and do your combination. You can do that if you want. Although we'll be practicing that on the first day of school as well. But if, you're, if, you're, if you want to walk around the building, parents, kids, or just kids, the house is open until tomorrow, until Wednesday, September 1st, first day of school. We're after here, we're seeing after for specific uh, questions that you may have. Uh, other than that, we're excited. Did I forget anything? It's about almost seven o'clock. We're right on time. Thank you very much for being here. If we don't see you or stay after for questions. Thank you, everyone. Go Raiders. Good.